Hey class, so now let's work on the Apollo 14 problem, um, which I like a lot, and you will see why. Um, whenever your professor tells you that he or she likes the problem very much, um, you should really study it for your exam. So for this problem, um, Alan Shepard was a, an astronaut on the Apollo 14 hit the ball with a six iron, uh, a golf ball. And so, of course, he ended up with something that uh, looks like that. So the angle over here is 30 degrees. And we know that the initial speed is 25 meters per second. And we also know that the gravity rotation constant, uh, I mean, the acceleration with the gravity on the moon is one sixth. Um, the acceleration due to gravity on Earth. So there you go. Nice problem. Uh, for the first part, we are asked to calculate how much farther the ball traveled on the moon than it will have uh, on Earth. So let's take a look at, at that. So I'm going to um, rewrite this I'm going to put it over here. Uh, we know that the x component of the velocity is going to be v naught cosine theta due to the way we set up the problem. And the initial velocity in y is going to be the total initial velocity times sine theta. So uh, now we have to uh, calculate how much farther it will travel. And uh, this is really two problems. The first problem is to calculate for how long the ball is going to be uh, airborne. And then to calculate, the second part is to calculate what is the distance that the ball travels in that time. So you know, without losing any, any generality, uh, if, if we have constant acceleration, then we can use uh, the kinematic equations that we are now familiar with. So we can use this one. We're looking for uh, a distance as a function of time. So let's transform this into how it will look like for the y-axis. It will look kind of like that. And we know that to end, you know, this is a flat surface. So why not should be equal to y. So if you see it in one dimension, it goes up, and then it goes down uh, to the same to the same position, right? Um, of course, it has a horizontal component, but we're just worried about the vertical component right now. So we can put this as uh, you know in a, in a form that is easier to understand as a quadratic equation. So we can say that 0 equals uh, y naught minus y 
because we know I apply t of 1 half a y t squared. So now we can um, plug in a few values in here. This is going to be 0. You know, it's, they are in the same position. You can say 0. Um, Vy, the uh, initial velocity in y is given by this. We can say 0 equals v naught sine theta. And then we know that uh, the acceleration is going to be negative. So let's call it minus 1 half of g t squared. Um, and of course, you know, really we have plus 1 half of minus g, right? So we can put it up here. So now, um, just so that we don't forget about this here, I'm going to put it over here. So your A is going to be minus 1 half of G, which you want to, you know, we're going to try to solve for T now. Uh, B is going to be V naught sine theta, and C equals 0. So if we want to use the quadratic equation, let me write it over here so we don't have much space. So if you want to solve a quadratic equation, you can use the quadratic formula. In this case, you know, t is going to be minus v plus or minus but it is simplified because c equals zero, so we can get rid of that. And so uh, we just have uh, t equals minus v plus or minus v over 2a. This is going to be either zero minus plus, which you get zero, over 2a, or minus 2b divided by 2a. So we can get rid of the 2's over here. We get the minus b over a. Um, and we can plug in the values, right? So time is going to be So the final result, t equals, we get rid of these negatives, these two we can put it up here, 2b naught sine theta over g. And you guys can see that. So. This is our first result. This is time that the the golf ball or any object is going to be airborne in a in parabolic motion, projective motion. This is general. You know, we didn't use um, too much or any numbers, so I'm going to beat it. I'm going to put it over here. Wait over there. So 
So now we have the time that it's going to take the golf ball to hit the ground again. What distance does it travel in that time? Well, um, we can use the same equation again. Our humble Lemaic equation. Um, let's rewrite it so that you know it works for the horizontal uh, components. What is the acceleration in x? It's zero, right? Uh, the velocity is always constant in x. So we can get rid of that. Um, also, we can assume that we start at the origin. So then this is zero. Or if you prefer, perhaps more appropriately, you can put this one over here and make it the displacement. Um, either way is fine. What matters is that the displacement is going to be v naught cosine theta times the time. And we have the time over here. So the displacement is going to be v naught cosine theta. Two v naught sine theta over g, and if you look at your trigonometric uh, trigonometric identities, uh, actually I need like two over here. Two cosine theta times sine theta uh, is going to be equal to the sine of two theta. And some authors, you know, in many books, you will find this formula as the range which we just derived from the kinematic equation. So notice that this two theta is twice the launch angle, right? If you, if you leave these two over here, out here, um, your answer is gonna be wrong. So uh, we got the range. It's gonna be V naught over G sine two theta. Again, this is a completely general result. So I'm just going to put it up here. Can you still see it? Yes. No. I was missing the square. So you have the V nut here and V nut here. So this is the square. Sorry about that. 